Come back, stand near us. Here it is. Joshua's done. We start. My name's Aaron Ciotti. You can call me Ciotti. My friends call me Ciotti. You can call me whatever you want. That's the way it's supposed to go. Um, thanks for joining me, everybody. Uh, anybody who came over from Joshua's stream, welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, I ride his coattails every <laughs> Sunday, Sunday during the day and uh, Monday night here and stream right after him. So, uh, yeah. Make yourselves at home, chat in the chat, uh, housekeeping stuff, description, um, audio good? Somebody put in the chat if the audio is good. Uh, description has the link to my Patreon channel. Let me show you guys what that's all about. Basically, I use the Patreon uh, very similar to Joshua in that... Uh, whatever you want to donate is uh, awesome from three dollars to 20 to 50 if you want my phone number uh, there you go and uh, yeah I put all my uh, random thoughts deep and darkest secrets um, testing that I'm doing tuning notes all kinds of fun stuff so yeah head on over and uh, if you like what you see join the party because we've been having a good time over there. there's a couple Facebook groups uh, secret Facebook groups that uh, you can join, jump in, and uh, one of them is for selling stuff, small little tight-knit group of uh, folks selling things, so you hopefully don't get ripped off. If you do get ripped off, sorry, I'll hunt them down with an axe. Uh, so yeah, let's get this going here. Tonight, we are going to take a look at, uh, oh, before I get there, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, CIDFPV. That's how you can keep in touch with me. That's how you can talk to me and message me. Uh, Patreon folks that put comments and messages get a little bit more attention because they're super awesome. But I will always respond to everybody uh, as quickly as I can over on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. Uh, so there, that's out of the way. Let's uh, let me get the chat going here and cool. Yeah, hey, Supercell. Wow, damn, Supercell. Thanks, man. Very very cool of you. Very very cool. Uh, Supercell just. Bought us something. <laughs> we'll test something uh, with Supercell's donation to make sure we're giving back to everybody. Uh, so, yeah, awesome. Again, thanks, brother. So, let's really quick do an unboxing because uh, last week we got some donations that I put towards some things on Amazon, which I posted, one of which is the Zing 1507s. I didn't open it, or it, just so that I could with you guys, so here it, here they are, and I, I have some exciting news on these. There you go, that's what it looks like when you buy a Zing 1507. This is the same little case that T-Motor uses, which is interesting. wonder if they're all being made in the same spot. Cool purple wires, I like that. Look at that, that's fancy. And uh, let's see what they give you in the way of... Screws. So they've got a purple prop nut in there. They've got a couple of M2 by 7s, if I'm not mistaken. And then, oh, right, the same thing. Uh, so yeah, some M2 by 7s, it looks like, some prop nuts, and the best Acrobrat motors available, to be real honest with you. Uh, the T Motor 1507s are great, but these are better. And uh, a couple of the reasons why are that the thank you license to drive 
now you guys can actually see it. I was looking right at the right at the right at OBX and in, in the little window, thinking, "Man, it's tiny." Uh, so yeah, there you go. You know what? I figured out how to focus this Logitech camera up close. I have to do it manually, but who cares, right? So there it be. There's the Zing. So the first thing I like about them is that number right there. 4200 kV the um, uh, the T motors are only coming in I gotta refocus it there we go T motors are only coming in 3800 kV which for a low pitch three inch prop like the gem fan 3028 I'm pointing over to where I keep them for some reason uh, wait ooh good one prop it the um, the hell was I just saying? Yeah, yeah. The the Gemfan 3028s are my preferred micro prop, and uh, they being a low pitch, they need to get some RPM in them to make good thrust. The Acrobat is a heavier three inch, so 4200 kV is going to do an awful lot better than 3800. Um, I know it doesn't seem like a big difference, but it actually is. Uh, these have also proven to be extremely durable. Uh, two people that I know have been jamming on these and have had really good durability, so that's good to know. And the most recent thing that I found out about these that I really, really like, um, thanks to John, is that... Oh, now I need to focus the damn thing up close again. Here we go. Is that, as you can see here... The bearings are removable. That's the bearing that used to be in there. Oh God, my fingers are disgusting. Um, <laughs> that's the, um, yeah, there you go. The the T-motors, and this could very well be just the prototypes. We won't know until they actually come out, but the T-motors will not, yeah, they are single strand windings. Uh, the T-motors, have glued in bearings that you cannot remove without completely obliterating them. Uh, I hope they change that for the production models mainly because the uh, one of the things that one of my first suggestions to T-Motor uh, when they sent me the protos was involving the motor shaft. Uh, the Emac 1606s and some 1408s use a three millimeter motor, motor shaft uh, three millimeter is a little bit overkill, I think, because what happens with the Emac 1606s is you always break the bearings. You never bend the motor bell and you always break the bearings. And for me, I want a motor where it kind of splits that, where it's going to either bend the bell or blow up the bearing. And the reason is, and I would actually prefer the motor bell to bend over the bearing to break. So let's talk about, um, T-Motor. F40 Pro 2s, which are their 2306s. Um, these are the perfect example of that. Um, with these motors, basically when I take a slam directly to the motor, uh, the first big enough slam will bend the bell on this guy, or it will dent the, um, uh, it'll bend the motor shaft rather, or it will dent the bell. Bearing will take a little bit of a hit and uh, it will, that was probably real loud. Uh, <laughs> The bearing will not be fresh as a daisy after that hit, but it's still totally fine, and it still pit tunes fine, and um, it, it's just completely okay. Grab another motor, pull the bell off, drop the bell into that stator, good to go. Next big slam is going to either break the bell or break the bearing. If it breaks the bearing, fine. I take that stator that I just pulled off for the new bell, pop the bearings out, drop the bearing in, or just take that whole stator and solder it in, and away we go. Um, sometimes the bearing will still survive that. It'll bend the bell, bend the motor shaft. Uh, the third big slam now is when the bearing dies. Uh, and again, that's totally fine because we've got that extra stator, uh, and we can just swap that out or pop the bearings out, swap them in, away we go. So the Emacs 1606 went kind of overboard on the motor shaft and uh, the motor sh the the bearing became the the gross weak point in that motor in my opinion 
so what I'd suggested the T motor was a two and a half inch uh, motor shaft or a three inch would be or three inch great three millimeter would be great but sometimes you have to sneeze. So a three millimeter motor shaft would be great, but only if they could <laughs> bump up the uh, the outer diameter, which is really hard um, when you're dealing with these tiny little motors. You only have so much space here uh, for the winding. So to put a a bearing in with a, a bigger outer race is usually pretty tough, um, which is why I I, I kind of had a feeling that was the case. So that's why I suggested a two and a half inch, Jesus, two and a half millimeter. Uh, motor shaft instead of three, but uh, well, I can't confirm, but I have a feeling that they didn't do that because that would require like an entire retool and it would probably be uh, a pain in the ass. But that for, for any uh, motor companies watching, <laughs> please, for God's sakes, make us uh, 1507 or 1506 or a 1505 or a 1405 or a 1406 with a two and a half millimeter uh, motor shaft and I will take you out to dinner and serenade you with a song. So there you go, Zing 1507 unboxing. I cannot wait to put them on the Acrobrat. Speaking of the Acrobrat, one of the other new things I got are these HQ 4 blade 2.9 inch, 2.9 pitch props and Oh, hold on, hold on. I did weigh it. I did weigh it. Got to do it now or I'll forget because I already did forget. Where'd the one go that I was weighing? Where'd it go, guys? Here it is. Uh, I think I saw 16.9. <laughs> no no song, Super. Super, so you, if, to get a song, you have to make motors. 16.8 grams per. <laughs> Thanks, Gauss. <laughs> Uh, let me see, I don't have a, I don't have a T-motor. Well, I have a T-motor stator and a bell with short wires, um, so this is not the fairest comparison, but we'll do it anyway. Well, actually, hold on. John gave me this one that's like really broken, which I'm assuming is the one that I broke by slamming it into a, uh, a metal pole. So let me cut the wires on this down to length and then we can do a fair comparison of the two motors. So let's just do this and a little bit of this. All right, cool. So six, well, that's full wire. So full wire is 16.9, heavier than the, uh, profit. I didn't know RC and Power had a 1506. Is that a 1506? I thought it was a... F it is a 1506. Uh, but supposedly it's very, very notchy. Uh, a couple... Two people told me they're very, very notchy. Uh, which I have no interest in since I'm a free, freestyle pilot. Uh, Alright, so 16.9. And then we've got the Zing. The blown up Zing here. With the short wires. That is 15.4. And then we've got the T-Motor prototype with both bearings. Oh, man, I jacked this up. Jeez, that won't even go on there. Wow, that's a big difference. 13.9. Really? What am I missing? What's missing from the T-Motor? Uh, the C-Clip. Jeez, 15.3. 13.9. Huh. Well, that's interesting. I don't love that. Wow, 13.9, 15.3. Should I just sit here all night just weighing them back to back over and over and over again? Damn, okay. Um, that changes things. Well, uh, I guess I'll be ordering one of the production T-Motors to see if the bearings are removable. That's interesting. I don't know which I would pick uh, because that is a big difference in weight. That's what, like six, six plus grams for the whole rig? Um, but weight on the end of the arms, 
uh, is the worst spot for it and makes a big difference. So, wow, damn, okay. I'm shocked by that. They're both 1507s. Uh, I mean, the, the, the Zing Bell is obviously, not obviously, but uh, the, the Zing Bell is definitely fatter. And, well, let's see. I'm, I'm super, this is, uh, shit, that threw me for a loop. I can't believe how much lighter that is. Let's see what, like, the bell and the staters weigh. Let's see where the extra weight is. Uh, not that that matters, but I'm just curious at this point. So, 6.6 .6 versus, whoa, okay, versus 8.8. .8. So there's all the weight, uh, the, the entire weight difference is in the bell. And my guess is it's in the magnets. The magnets look thicker on the Zing. So, yeah. What KV? <laughs> I know, I know, Noah. I'm, I just might. 6.4 on the Zing stator. 7.2 on the T-motor stator. <laughs> It just gets weirder and weirder. Um, can I put the T-motor bell on the Zing stator? Sort of fits. Wow! Um, that is crazy. Where is... Why, oh! Well, that's not good news. I don't even have the... I don't even have the bearings in the Zing. And... And it was still at that weight. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, here's one bearing. It's probably not a big difference, but just for the sake of being thorough. No, can't find it. Let's see if one bearing even comes up on the scale. Give this a second to settle in. So it's at 6.7. Put the bearing on. Nothing happens. Eh, 6.8. So, yeah, maybe another 0.1 of a gram. So there it is. Uh, that has me completely confused. I gotta give that some thought to kind of weigh out the advantages. Of so, so the Zing, if I had to guess, is gonna be a little more durable. It has seemed that way so far. The Zing has more RPM and is purple and has purple wires. Uh, when it FPV asks about the Emacs 1606, they are too notchy to build a freestyle rig with. Uh, racing rigs only, unfortunately. I spent about six months trying to get those motors to work and uh, just couldn't, just could not get them to work. They were just too notchy. They had too many vibrations. So, yeah, those are the advantages of the Zing. The advantages of the T motor are one and a half, one, 1 1.6, whatever the hell it was. Uh, grams lighter, and most of that is in the bell, which is an even bigger performance improvement. And that's probably it. That's probably the only advantages to the to the T motor. But that's a big advantage. Um, one and a half grams. So uh, if it's story time, I guess I'll tell the story about my five inch rigs, where I was running those. Uh, I was running those Rotor Riot skids, and I weighed one. I was running them for months, and then I weighed one of them. It was two and a half grams. I'm like, damn, that's a lot. That's 10 grams total, two and a half grams on the end of each arm. I took a heavyweight build that I had. It was a CL1, like 680 grams at the time, and that was a noticeable difference when I pulled those off the ends of the arms. Not in the total weight, uh, but... In just the feeling and just it, with with the weight removed it just felt electric like the the arms the the quad rotated a lot more freely um, in all three on all three axes so yeah don't sleep on uh, motor weight it is very very important probably a lot more important than we give it credit for uh, and that's why I run still uh, t-motor f40 pro 2s on my 5 inch rigs uh, because they're the lightest most durable, good mix of power, smoothness, all that good stuff. Uh, five inch motors that I've been able to find. 
The smoothness between the T-motors and the Zings is pretty much exactly the same. The, the Zings seem to have smaller notches, sort of. Uh, let me... I have them both. Where'd the Acrobrat go? Uh, we'll talk about these four-blade props in a second, but I need to get this out of the way uh, so that I can... I don't know. I just need to, just need to do it. Sometimes you just got to do it, guys. Uh, yeah, so they're... I mean, they're both very, very smooth. The notches are a little bit smaller on the Zing, but I don't think that makes a difference. So yeah, there you go. If you want lighter motors, go with the T-Motors. If you want more RPM and more purple and probably a little bit better durability, get the Zing 1507s. Damn, okay. I'm still shocked at how much heavier that is. So the four blade props, I didn't actually get to fly, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, this Acrobrat has a pretty aggressive tune. I, I dialed it in on the Gemfan 3028s, which I know are very, very well balanced props. HQ uh, tends to have a little bit of a problem getting their props as balanced as Gemfan, specifically with their micro props. Uh, I've never been able to put HQ micro props onto a rig. Um, that I had tuned for gem fans and have them fly properly and or not just fly away um, because they're just not as well balanced. So essentially what I then have to do if I want to run the HQ props is go into the tune, turn everything down, turn the P's down some, D's down a little bit, probably turn a little bit more filtering on. Uh, so these both have 14 poles profit. Uh, yeah, the, the, the T motor has 14 poles as well. Uh, and the same, so the same thing happened when I ran these, uh, Brad and I over the weekend were flying at, uh, at night at a parking garage that I can show you guys in a minute and I would arm this and it would just take off and fly away. And in the process of doing that, it, uh, the second time it did it, it, fl I, I tried to kind of move the sticks around to get it to come back and stop oscillating. Uh, but it got all the way to the top of the, the parking garage before I disarmed, and then it came down on the concrete, and it bent one of these. Uh, I think I fixed it. Yeah, it bent one of the bells, uh, the motor shafts, rather, in the bell on one of the motors. So I had to swap it out, and I am now officially on my last set of T-Motor prototypes. What I will probably do, I guess what I'll do is save these... 4,000 kV staters and buy some of these T-motors and just drop the new bells on. Because I haven't broken... No, I have. I did break one stator. I blew the bearing up in one of the staters. Um, oh, okay. So that's what I'll do. I'll buy one of the production T-motor 1507s. I will yank the bell and I will see if the bearings are removable. So, yeah. I'll get one of those. We'll see if the bearings are removable. Uh, if the bearings are removable, T-motor all day, I think, as long as uh, I guess I'll have to test the 3800s. Okay, so I will put one of the 3800 uh, KV staters on here, and the PID loop will then jack everybody else down, all the other three ones down to 3800 KV, and... Uh, That'll be cool. That'll be a really cool test. So yeah, that that also confirms that uh, this also confirms that RPM filters are good, but they're not infallible. Uh, like I said, I did have this tune pretty jacked up because I am really trying to get away from some of the uh, bad flight characteristics that are inherent to micros. And I've almost got them out of this on the Gemfan 3028s. It almost flies uh, perfect. I'm going to start saying perfect instead of like a 5-inch. But use those interchangeably. So, yeah. I would like to spend a little bit more time on this. I will turn the, uh, the tune down just a little bit one night this week. Uh, and see if that cleans it up. But if I have to turn the tune down a bunch... I, I'll call it quits on these uh, on these four blades, but 
if you want lots of grip and you're not hell-bent on tuning out the tiniest of wiggles and uh, prop wash, the, the sort of nth, taking it to the nth degree on prop wash uh, with your micro tune, uh, these will probably work for you. They're nice and light. The material seems good. They're very durable. I can tell it's, the, I mean, HQ makes the most durable props, hands down. Uh, so they're probably a really good prop, but probably not for me. Probably not for me. Maybe they're for you, though. Don't let me put you off of trying them. Buy a set. Nabi, you leaving? Thanks for hanging, Nabi. Uh, Nabi got up to 100 subs on his YouTube. Click his name. Get him up to 101, folkies. So that's the Acrobat. Done with that. Uh, I forgot to mention. I just assumed that you guys knew. Uh, so my best friend in the world, Brad McManus, McManus FPV. Look him up. Uh, he came down from New Jersey this weekend. Uh, I was all alone. It's not possible to balance these props, uh, YouTube, and they're just too light, and they break a lot. So it's it's kind of obnoxious to... Um, the biggest problem is that you just can't... They don't work on the balancing rigs because they're too light. Uh, so to balance them, you're kind of taking guesses, and that sucks. So, yeah, it's not realistic. Uh, so, my wife was gone for nine days, and uh, she went to Charleston to work on a uh, feature-length feature short film-ish uh, passion project of our friend Michelle, uh, Octopunk Media. And towards the end of that, so she took the car, right? The Miata's destroyed... Um, so she drove the car down there. So I was here for nine days while the car. Uh, so my buddy from New Jersey, Brad, came down, rented a car, flew down, rented a car, and uh, we had a little FPV weekend vacation. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we just flew like crazy. I took Friday off of work, and we must have hit seven or eight spots. And Sunday morning, we uh, flew around. We, we filmed some stunt bike guys that do the wheelies and stoppies and... Right on the handlebars and all that good stuff. So, yeah, that was super fun. So that's where I was yesterday. Last night, uh, we were getting stuff cleaned up and getting things calmed down. Uh, so, yeah, we did a ton of flying and broke a lot of stuff. Did a lot of testing, played around with tunes. Uh, he's got an Apex frame that he brought down with steel motors, steel V3 stouts. Uh, so I got to fly that. That was super fun. He also got the uh, 2306 Zings delivered here, and he built a rig on those. They were really nice. Uh, extremely durable. Holy shit, are they durable. Uh, hands down, the most durable 5-inch motor I've ever seen. So, yeah, that was super cool. And, uh, yeah, so I got some, some other fun stuff to tell you guys, and then we'll take a look at some of the footage. I only really have the footage uh, ready with proxies, of the uh, the night parking garage spot, but good lord, is that a hell of a ripper. Uh, Dusty Stunts asks if anybody's into cars. I am, for sure. That was my previous hobby to this. Um, autocross track days, I was an instructor for a little over 10 years. And uh, Nabi, I am going to stream again this week. Uh, potentially Women Wednesday is on this week. Uh, Kristen, my wife, will come on and hopefully work on her. Uh, her build, her racing build, right over here on the bench. So hopefully Wednesday night, I can't promise anything, but hopefully Wednesday night, it'll be Women Wednesday up in here. What was I going to say about this? Oh, yeah, right. So uh, something super cool that we kind of stole off of Kebab FPV that worked really, really well for uh, filming the, the slower subjects in that, I mean, of course, Sport bikes are fast as shit, but when they're doing endos and stoppies and wheel stands, they're not doing it at, well, sometimes they're doing wheel stands at 100 plus, but usually they're not doing those at 100 plus miles an hour. Um, we were in, um, we were basically next to a uh, loading dock at a, at a big warehouse. So it's just like a big old, probably quarter mile or so strip. Um, and they're going 10, 20, 30 miles an hour uh, doing all the stunts. And I've filmed them once before, and I had my cameras all at the standard up tilt, which for me is 30. 
And even though, and I knew this was going to be a problem, but so I tried to stay as low to the ground as possible, but it still wasn't enough. And the camera was just pointing up a lot, and they were sort of, most of the, the riders were down the bottom of the frame like this for most of the time, so it was a lot of, a lot of useless footage. Um, and what I've seen Kebab do is put uh, little standoffs back here uh, to, to decrease the angle. So I wanted to show you guys that because it worked fucking great. It worked so good, and I have um, some tips and, and tricks to do this right. Uh, so that you don't screw up the, uh, so that you don't rip your TPU camera mount. So let me focus this in close, and I'm gonna show you guys. So I lose my light when I go up here, but I've got this one. This might work. Let's see how that is. Eh, still not enough light. All right, let me get it focused, and then I'll mess with the light. All right, so there's the focus. Yeah, that's fine. You guys can see that, I think. Uh, so it's a little five millimeter, uh, standoff or spacer, and then it's these little, uh, and this is important, the, the, you see the little angled bastard on the top there? That's one of those, that's one of these little button head cap things, and the reason why that's important is if you don't have that on the bottom there, uh, the, the standoff only has a little tiny contact patch with the TPU and that's that's what Brad had and one of his TPU mounts ripped uh, when he crashed because all the when you dig in all the weight comes like this and it just ripped the back so if you're gonna do this I would definitely suggest getting these little button head cap shit birds and uh, put one on the bottom there so that you have a bigger amount of surface area against the TPU um, and then you're also gonna need long screws these are like m3 by 25 maybe even 30 so yeah worked really really well and uh, so I did one of them on here I did a five mil spacing on here and as you can see it definitely cut the uh, the camera angle down a little bit and then on the hero 7 rig I actually did two of them and that worked just as well and again you can see that really brought the camera angle down if I had to guess probably 15 degrees or so uh, and there you go. That's what the, the little doubles look like. And this, of course, required a very long screw, M3 by 30, I believe it was, uh, to do that. But, man, did it work. Uh, that This is such a cool trick. The TPU is completely fine. No problems there. And, yeah, it was super cool. It, and, and it's also, like, interchangeable and, and removable. And I had, I had my... Um, so the noise floor was horrible for some reason there. And uh, on my very first battery, actually, I went down the other end of the uh, of the strip that they were doing all their stunts and whatnot on. And I lost video and FR Sky. It was my only, it's my 4S quad, the last one on FR Sky. Um, lost video completely and it fail safed and just drove itself right into the building and broke a, uh, broke a motor off of an arm somehow. So I, you know, brought it back, sat there in the car, boop, 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 take those two off, drop them onto another one, away we go. So it was uh, just a really, really nice kind of setup. Of course, if you have a 3D printer, just print yourself a 20 degree mount. Um, although with these front load mounts, which I really like, I don't think you can print these in 20 degree. Uh, reason being, they print from the bottom up and I think... I believe, so you can kind of see, nah, you can't see it, but yeah, you might be able to see it. The lines of the TPU are going here, right? Um, so with a 30 degree camera angle, it's, it's cocked up enough where the, uh, there's plenty of strength, but I think if this was down at 20, I feel like these, the, the, the way that it prints, it might not be strong enough. It might want to just separate the, the layers. Um, no idea if that's true or not, but BMC 3D, who makes these front load mounts, does not make them in anything other than 30 degrees, and I think that might be why. Now that I say that, I realize I can just message Brent and ask him, which I'll probably do tonight because I'm curious. Uh, but there you go. Uh, right. What else? I think that was what I wanted to share. Let me see what I can do about the chat getting caught up. You guys have been super active because you're all awesome 
uh, Nabi Finn, Kyle K, Budget FPV, Noah is here, Shane Duggar is here, John Smith, YouTubin, that's a good name, is here, Engage FPV is here, Private Island, uh, ooh, Martins, Bogdanovs, Bogdanovs, how are you, Martin? Uh, who else? Alex Dalton. House blog is here. License to drive. I'm going to start repeating now. Marcos Wynn. Who else do we have? Tiago is up in here. Adam Botswick. YouTube and again. Mongo is here. Chris Webb. Tiago. Supercell. Nabi. YouTube and Corey Guy. All right. I'm going to call it there. Corey Guy says no echo. Thank you, sir. How's the uh, how's the sync? I've been trying to dial the the sync in. Here I'm going to I'm going to give you guys a sync clap. Tell me if it happens before or after the audio. Do it again. One more time. So, what's first, the audio or the video or are they perfectly matched? Uh cool. I haven't seen a lot of questions, but I am looking right now. I'll try to answer what I can before we jump into looking at some footage and uh, yeah, get some work done up in here. YouTube is asking about the all up, uh, oh no, A AWG, the of the wires I'm assuming you mean. Uh, it says on them, but I'm going to need, my old man eyes are going to need a loop to actually read it. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? 24! 24. 24 gauge wire, which is pretty standard on micro motors. I can't remember the last time I saw one that didn't have 20 gauge wires. So, there you go. Uh, 661 FPV is here. What's up, man? Kyle K. Sabine is here. JCS. Alright, I'm gonna call it there. If I didn't read your name, sorry. Uh, you gotta get in earlier. If you're, if you're the first one in and commenting, I'll uh, usually read your name. Okay, let's see if I can find any questions. Duper derpa derpa. There we go. Okay, thoughts on the 1606. We talked about that. I flip 50, 50. I can't speak. 1507 is definitely the smoothest motor I've ever had on a quad, Dusty Sun says. Uh, all right, who else? Who else? Who else? So supercell, I thought, I thought higher KV was less windings. I thought it was less windings with a heavier gauge wire. Uh, don't quote me on that. I figured out why my allergies act up on me every time I stream. It's because I'm trying to move my hands around to give you guys something to look at, and I touch my face at some point early in the stream with my left hand, and my left hand is the pet the cat hand because I'm allergic to the fuckers. And my right hand is the scratch my face hand. So, um, yeah. That's why I've been having allergy attacks and scratching my nose the entire stream. I've already screwed it up tonight. Maybe I'll write myself a note on the uh, second monitor here to... I almost did it. To not touch... Just remember. Left hand. Or maybe I'll just hold a quad the whole time with my left hand. And then I can itch my face with the quad. Um, Alright, let me keep scrolling. <laughs> Uh, derpa, 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 derpa. Tux herd motors without bearings fly amazing. Worth a shot. <laughs> uh, win it. Asked about the 1606s. We talked about those. Noah says purple for the win, of course. Purple and red all day. What else do we have here? So, Profit. Profit said, uh, okay, I didn't know Nachi motors are good for racing. Them being not, motors being notchy is not necessarily good for racing. Motors being notchy tends to mean that they're very powerful, and that's why they're good for racing. Uh, and they're also good for racing because they're not smooth. <laughs> you don't need a motor that, that has no jello and an, on, an H, uh, on an HD cam uh, for racing. So, yeah, the, when, it, when a motor is notchy, just in my opinion, because I'm trying to get clean HD footage out of everything to be honest at this point uh if it's a notchy motor it's a racing motor to to me uh if you are only flying with an fpv cam then the notchy motors are probably going to be fine but you're not going to be able to get a, a really locked in pid tune 
I just did it. I just scratched my, you know what it is? My, I'm on the mouse with my right hand. Maybe I just stay off the mouse. Well, I can't, I gotta scroll. Whatever, figure it out. Or I'll just have allergy attacks every Sunday during the day and Monday night. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it for you guys. <laughs> I'm willing to sacrifice. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So we covered that. Looking for any other questions. We talked about balancing props and how effing impossible it is. Uh, hey, there's Profit uh, singing the praises of the RPM filters. Uh, three inch was unflyable in Beta Flight 4.0. So, Beta Flight 4.0 was an attempt to have the firmware a little bit closer to Flight 1 and KISS, in that it's basically out of the box tune was way more aggressive. So, that's more than likely the problem that you were having, Profit, um, on 4.0. If you went to 14, uh, 14, Jesus. If you went to 4.1 without the RPM filters, I bet you you would have been okay. I bet you it would have been flyable. But the RPM filters are a whole nother level of good uh, on micros. So yeah, they are phenomenal. Any of you guys that have F4, no, well, no, they just came out with um, lightened up firmware for F3s. Uh, so look up UAV futures. Uh, wait, no, sorry, UAV Tech, UAV Tech, not UAV Futures. Uh, if you look up UAV Tech's channel, his most recent video, I believe, is uh, a slimmed down version of 4.1 that will work on even an F3 board. Uh, but if you're on an F4 or an F7 flight controller, you don't even have to do that. Uh, it, it, even And even if you're on a BL Heli S ESC, you can just get Joe Lucid's firmware for like five bucks, which is well, well worth it. Please, guys, don't balk at that. Support these developers. The more we support them, the better flight software we're going to get. And the RPM filters are a really good example of that. Uh, with micros, we've always had issues with the software. 4.1 with the RPM filters has been a game changer for us. If we continue to support those guys that did that out of the kindness of their hearts and, you know, uh, in the in that the beta flight developers are not paid they're volunteers uh, so the more we support them by choice the more likely they are to come out with more cool shit for us so yeah if you have a micro get yourself on rpm filters uh, Joshua Bardwell has a fantastic video of course on how to get it done that's actually a video that I used uh, over on my patreon I have uh, broken down Mark Spatz, UAV Tech's tips for how to tune the RPM filters and which filters to remove um, sort of by an order of operations uh, so that you get the most bang for your buck, but you remove the filtering that is uh, the least important first, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth. Um, you will not believe the difference. It is phenomenal. So there we go. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Hey, we got something from Puffy. Puffy's got a Mamba F722 BL Heli S ESC uh, with the RPM filters on. When he runs 4K 4K, the motors are cool. Wait. When I run 4K 4K D Shot 600, motors are cool. On 8K 8K D Shot 600, the motors run hot. Interesting. I have not heard anyone. Uh, not hurt anybody with that. That's super interesting. Um, I don't know. I am going to look for that when I'm poking around the internet. <laughs> Real interesting, Puffy. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of a reason for that. The only thing I can think of is that at the higher loop, at, at the 8K, 8K loop, it's picking up more. So it's kind of the same thing with the reason behind Betaflight not supporting 32K, uh, because they determined that any uh, any movements beyond 8K are just garbage, and, and we don't need them coming in to the software to be dealt with. We can remove them with a hardware filter, um, or remove them by going down in loop times. When you want to talk about loop times, you also have to mention KISS, which runs at 1K, um, and does a hell of a job at 1K. So it could be something along those lines, I guess, but 
that's I'm kind of stretching to be honest with that because it's the only thing I can think of. Uh, I wish Mark Spatz was in here. Maybe he'd have a, an opinion on that. Post a post that up on uh, one of Mark Spatz's videos. See if uh, see if you can get him to confirm that. I will if I'm talking to him. I'll ask him. Uh, but yeah, post that into a comment on one of his videos. I'm super interested in, in what he has to say. Put it in the uh, uh, in his new one, in the F3 one, because he's probably looking at the comments in that more often. All right, I'm almost caught up on chat here. Uh, bop, 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 bop. Oh yeah, uh, uh, Prophet had a good point. Uh, losing the RPM data, so that's really important. Make sure that you go into your motors tab and. Uh, make sure that you're not getting any errors. You shouldn't be. F7 should be able to run. Um, oh, you said BL Heli S. Oh, so that's interesting. I wonder if if BL Heli S can't handle. No. I guess that could be it. I guess BL Heli S just might not be able to handle for whatever reason. I, I don't know why it would make a difference because you're on D-Shot 600 on, on both of those tests. Um, but I guess maybe that could have something to do with it. Um, it's a good one, though. That That's a really interesting... Uh, RPM filters are so new that I think uh, it's, it's way too early to kind of troubleshoot that. But, yeah, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll put my ear to the ground and... It'll get cold. See what I can find. All right, cool. Uh, Dusty Sun says Chevy is shooting a commercial at the Speedway. That's pretty sick. Uh, try, <laughs> tried to convince them to let me chase it with my quad. Oh, boy. That sucks that I'm sure they didn't let you. That would have been super cool. Uh, but I'm sure their insurance wouldn't cover it. So there you go. All right. Supercell says every time I see your picture, it reminds me of a monkey face. You talking about me? <laughs> All right, and I am caught up. Whoa, it did the thing again where it zips forward on me. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Dusty, man, I'm trying to get down there. It's uh, Travel for me is very tough. Uh, I'm new at this job. I've only been in this job for a couple months, and whatever. Money is really tight right now, so probably will be a while. I've, you know... I've, if I hadn't run into someone with my car, it would have been a lot easier. But, uh, hey, it is what it is. I'll get down there for sure, man. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, oh, here's where you guys hooked me up with a sound check after. Microsecond delay after. Delayed audio. Okay, so the audio is delayed. So let's try this. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, uh, I'm going to really quickly change the... Uh, where is it at? Advanced Audio Properties. And there's a sync offset. So the sync offset is at 300. And what it's doing is delaying the audio. So Noah, you said the audio is too delayed. So I'm going to go from 300 to 200. And maybe that's better. I'll do it again. I don't know if that updates live, but... Ha! Hopefully that's better. If it's worse, we'll F around with it. Engage FPV asks, do you have a tip on keeping the FPV camera uh, lens from coming, from coming loose? Boy, do I ever. Uh, the All of the camera lenses... Man, this is handy being able to manually focus this. So all of the camera lenses... Let's get some light going here. All of the camera lenses have... A little, it's this guy here. It's like a collar. It's like a, uh, a collar with all these, can you hear it? All these little nublets on it. These little nubbins. Uh, and that collar is how you get it to not come loose. Basically what you want to do is refocus on yourself. And then, um, so you're going to loosen the collar when you need to adjust the lens. You're going to get your lens into focus. You can try at that point to then just tighten the collar and hold the lens in place. I never have luck doing that. So what I do is I'll pick like a reference point. The, the lenses usually have some kind of text on them somewhere. 
and I will just pick a reference point as to where that text lines up. So like for example on this one, the R in Runcam roughly lines up with, with the little eagle guy here. Um, so what I'll then do is back the lens off a little bit because I know where it needs to be. I know where that reference point is. So I'll back the lens off and then I'll tighten down the collar as much as I can and then I'll twist the whole damn thing, the lens and the collar. I'll twist those until they're nice and tight and until that reference point is lined up again. And now your camera, your, your lens is locked in, it's not going to loosen up and you're in focus. That took me a long goddamn time to figure out. Um, so spread that little tip around because it'll save somebody from yanking all of their hair out of their head because it is such a pain in the ass losing lenses and having all your lenses not be in focus. Uh, so spread the love, everybody. This is the uh, this is the other casualty of this weekend. The um, I'm having a real problem with Runcam Micro Eagles ripping the um, ripping the little collars out on hard crashes. The they, they sink these little brass uh, these little brass guys in that have the threads and they're all nubbly on the outside so they so they kind of grab it. And so but yeah on, on hard hits it just rips them right out. So yeah, I don't know. And I mean it, this one I even epoxied like look at this. This is this is absurd. So I have begun to epoxy around. Man, that's hard to see. Uh, I'm epoxying around where those guys are, but it still just ripped them clean out. And I'm also epoxying the bottom. It's hard to see, but I epoxy down here because there's a couple of. Uh, couple of little resistors down there that if you have it in a mount and it slips like that it'll break the resistors off and then it'll it'll just kill the entire camera uh so yeah kevin cortez says clariton oh i got clariton but it takes hours to kick in uh and i always forget to take it if I were a smart person, I would set an alarm on my phone for like six o'clock to take clarity on Mondays and on Mondays and twelve o'clock on Sundays. <laughs> but I'm not. All right, what else do we have? Uh, use the mouse with the left hand, <laughs> YouTube, and good luck with that one. Use a glove. What? <laughs> watch your hands. I think you meant to say watch your hands, Tiago. Uh, that would probably help. All right. $50 a stream for allergy attack. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Acrobat with Brat. Uh, John Larson asks, Acrobat with Brat Motors, what props do you recommend? So the Brat Motors are T-mount. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, All day, every day, micro freestyle prop, 3-inch, uh, Gemfan 3028. If you want to try something else, the Emacs Avan 3-inch prop is really good. It's just incredibly fragile. Um, you don't bend, you don't break props off, but you bend the prop like halfway down the uh, halfway down the blades because they get really thin about halfway down on the uh, three inch Avan. But yeah, the Gemfan 3028s are just amazing. Uh, so that's definitely gonna be my suggestion. They're best, they're, they're the best balanced I've found. Although the the Avons are plenty well balanced uh, and. They're not super durable, but they're not that bad. They're below average in terms of durability, but they're well balanced and they're low pitch. And we don't have a lot of options that fulfill those two uh, those two requirements. So there you go. Yes, Kyle, that those are I think you do have to overclock the F3 by a little bit. Uh, but it's an F3, whatever. If you blow it up, it gives you an excuse to buy an F7. So uh, that would be my approach. Okay. What else do we have here? Tiago says, you inspire me to get my Mob Mobula 7 with RPM filters. Uh, Supercell wants to be a mod. He is now a mod because he's in here all the time and he behaves properly and seems to be a cool dude. So there we go. 
I might stop there with the mods. I think I have enough. I've got Tux, Noah, uh, who are almost always here because they're awesome. Now we've got Supercell, and I think there's one more that I'm probably forgetting. Whoever I'm forgetting, I apologize. Uh, all right. Very close now. Cool. And, man, this the, the YouTube chat thing just is rough. There we go. Okay. Now it has stopped zipping to the bottom and not letting me see the last two pages. All right, cool. Uh, 4K has been better for me on both F4 and F7, says Noah. That's interesting. Uh, I'm on 4K on everything because when I was doing it, uh, I, it was, was before, so another post on the Patreon is actually, uh, some little McGiblets that I grabbed from one of the other Betaflight devs in the Black Box group, the, the Facebook Black Box group, where he said, uh, he linked to the GitHub with the, uh, with the RPM filtering notes, and it says in there specifically that as long as your, uh, CPU load in the little test that you do in the CLI is below 80%. Previously, we thought it was 30%. Um, as long as it's below 80%, you're fine. So I've got everything on 4K, 4K, and they're phenomenal. So maybe I'll just leave it. But I guess I should try 8K, 8K just to see if uh, see if I run into the same problem. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, if you want to be safe, just run 4K, 4K. It works perfect. It's it flies amazing. Uh, Donnie 24 FPV asks about the crate box with the Acrobrat V2. Absolutely. Um, awesome, awesome value. The only thing I'm unsure of in that box is the Lumineer flight controller and ESC. I have not had great luck with Lumineer products, although the best luck that I've had with Lumineer products is with one of their flight controllers, the 20 by 20 F4 Lux V2 is a flight controller that I pounded the living snot out of a year and a half or so ago, and it didn't care. So in theory, the Luminaire flight controller will be totally fine. The only uncertainty becomes the ESC, and my guess is that Luminaire is not making them. They're just having them made by somebody else, and then they're just white labeling it. So yeah, it's probably fine. Uh, everything else in the box is awesome though, and even if you have to replace that ESC, you're probably saving some money. Uh, so yeah, that um, that crate is going to be a hell of a value. And it's also the early, the, the soonest anybody's going to get a V2 um, production Acrobrat. I think when Tommy gets back to LA, he's going to um, shoot me out the prototype. I don't know when the, the actual production model is going to be out. I know that that quad box shipping is going to be the launch of the V2 Acrobrat. Uh, all that being said, the V1 Acrobat is still awesome. Don't feel, if, if any of you guys want to get yourselves into an Acrobat right now, um, the V1 is very, very similar. Basically, from what I understand, the V2 is just taking all of the feedback that we've given them, um, we being the prototype testers, but also in the Acrobat group, uh, Facebook group, uh, taking all that feedback, taking all the images of where the frame broke, how it broke, uh, and just doing little little upgrades. We did a lot of testing on the V1 before it came out, and Tommy made improvements there. But one, you know, th there's like 15 of us, 20 of us. Um, whereas you release it to thousands of folks, and you get a hell of a lot more feedback. So, yeah, the the version two, from what I understand, is just going to be a tougher, a um, little bit more durable setup. But again, the V1 is awesome. So if you don't want to wait, you're fine getting a V1. Uh, ZDK root. Okay, ZDK root making me feel like I'm not losing my mind. Uh, higher KV is fewer windings, lower KV motors are heavier, all else being equal. So, let's test something. One of the dirty little secrets of manufacturing these motors, from what I understand, is that, those are bells, that doesn't help me, I want stators, uh, is that when when they go to a higher kv there's less windings that equals less copper in there and that can potentially mean less power what they're supposed to do when they go up in kv is go up in the thickness of the copper but in order to do that 
you have to either have a second winding machine only doing one one machine doing each kv um but supposedly what they actually do is just use the same machine and just run less windings on it because that's a lot cheaper right uh and we're bargain hunters all things considered right i mean we we as consumers we always do tend to gravitate towards cheaper goods uh so that's kind of tough for them uh i would love to man i do have a i do have a caliper i could technically go totally nutso and uh try to test that but i'm gonna do the half ass thing instead and just weigh two different motors so i what what i believe is that the when you, so this is a 2400 and this is a 2600 i also have these stators in 1600 but when they go down that low i can almost guarantee you that they use a different gauge uh copper but from what i understand like from a 24 to a 2600 they'll just use the same copper let's see if the scale will uh can shed some light on that and i don't love the idea of cutting this any shorter do i have any that have wires that are a little bit longer i don't so i will cut these down a little bit what about this guy nope all right so i'll cut these down so it's a fair fight here to try to get everything equal All right, that's pretty damn close. Yep, that's as close as I can get it. All right, so we've got... Ah, oh, shit. I don't know which is which now. Yes, I do. The 2400s are all red. 2400 is 17.2, so if this theory holds true, this should be lighter. Oh, God, it's a lot lighter. 16.9. Uh, so there you go. T-Motor F40 Pro 2s, which you can no longer get. It appears that T-Motor uses the same copper uh, between them. Which, again, like I said, that's apparently the norm. And I don't know if I can blame them necessarily. That's also really interesting because that's, um, on these guys, that's the only way to tell the difference between the KVs on the stators. There is no marking. There's not nothing on these staters um, to tell you which KV is which. Okay, so that was the lighter one. So that's in here with the high KV motors. And this is the heavier one, 17.2. Well, shit, let's keep going. I have 1,600 KV and 1,750 KV over here as well. Uh, let's see where they're at. Although, I don't have any with short wires, so I'm going to actually stop there. Unless you guys really want me to keep going with that and keep weighing things, um, I'm going to not weigh that one. Maybe this one? Nah, it's full wires too. Yeah, I just don't want to cut these wires down because I don't like to lock myself into using uh, race wires. Uh, but there you go. So there's a uh, there's a little bit of science for us on uh, on a Monday night. Uh, I meant to change my shirt because I knew I was going to get hot as hell in here. Let's try just turning the fan on. Maybe I won't die from heat exhaustion. All right, cool. Well, I put the scale away, so now I can't keep... Uh, ZDK, the 1505s didn't come yet because they're shipping from China. I didn't pay attention to that. Uh, it, Amazon seems to be the only place to get them anyway, so it, I, I didn't really have a choice. But uh, it said they're going to be here in like the end of November, beginning of December. So we'll get them eventually. Uh, I'm excited. What else do we got? Damn near perfect audio now. It's synced. Cool. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. And Supercell says, so fewer windings, but thicker on high KV. Yep, that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, but as we just found out, 
one of the arguably the best uh, motor manufacturer. Doesn't do it between the 24 and the 2600. But like I said, I can almost guarantee that the 1600 and the 1750. Well, so I'll bet you the 1600 and the 750, 1750 are the same way. I bet you they they specced the 1600 out for the correct thickness copper and then just used that same copper for the 1750. That was one of the reasons why I was buying. Um, so when I found that out, that they were using the same copper from, uh, I think I talked to Ryan Harrell about that. Um, that was one of the reasons I continued to run 2400s instead of going up to the high KV uh, 2600s. I always kind of thought that the higher KV F40 Pro 2s didn't feel quite as nice, uh, and it makes a lot of sense now. They have got less copper, so they've got less stank. The fact that they're higher KV means that they do ask for more torque, but less copper in the stator is not a good thing. So maybe that has something to do with why they had that different feel. But I always preferred the way 2400s felt over 2600s, uh, and the same thing has happened down on the low KV side. I really prefer the 1600s versus the 1750s. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe there's some truth to that. I'm just one dude. All right. Kevin Cortez says, quit crashing. Not a chance in hell of that. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, I fly... Basically, I fly at any given time as if it's my best day ever. <laughs> I always kind of fly beyond my actual abilities and... I kind of learned that in motorsports. Um, once I was an instructor working with different students, um, the students who would push themselves beyond what they were able to, were able to do uh, and would go spinning off into the grass or run over a lot of cones, they were the students that would excel. And, and they were the ones that would, you know, at the end of their first season, be competitive. And then the folks who were, were much more reserved and like, oh, you know, I don't want to spin. I don't want to push the car too hard. Those were the folks that would have a lot of a lot of trouble learning. And I, and I would kind of teach them the same thing at every event. Uh, so I'm a big proponent of crash, 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 and then crash some more. Um, that being said, if you're throwing a Hail Mary and you crash... You didn't learn anything. You're, you're, so if your skill level is a 5 out of 10, you want to be crashing doing stuff that's like a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10. If you're doing something that's 10 out of 10, it's like so outside of the realm of possibilities for you that you kind of, if you nailed it, that's cool. You got a great piece of video. Um, but you're just not going to really learn anything because you were just so far beyond the, the realm of, of your skill level that it's kind of like, well, I just screwed that up. Whereas if, if you're like really close to something and you almost hit it, it's like, okay, what did I do wrong? I, I over-rotated or I under-rotated or I didn't blip the throttle early enough. You can actually figure out what happened and learn from it. Um, whereas again, if it's a Hail Mary, you're, I just, in my opinion, you're not going to learn a whole, a whole hell of a lot. Um, because you just flung it at the <laughs> at a big dive gap and hoped that it hit it, um, versus you had a little bit more of a of a calculated approach. So yeah, crash uh, brake motors. This stuff is cheap and easy to replace. Take advantage of that. Um, with you know my background in motorsports, it's anything but cheap and easy to repair. Um, it's a complete train wreck to repair and very very expensive. So. This hobby for me is such an awesome chance to really just go for it and, and fling stuff at the at the nearest uh, dive gap and uh, try to get it on in there and see what happens at the bottom. Uh, all right, uh, what else do we have here? Oh, that's cool. Stephen Rossi says, Luminaire Lux F7 is nearly identical to the Maytech F7 SE, uh, but it has some weird gyro noise uh, that the Maytech doesn't. Doesn't affect the flight performance, but prevents you from getting filters tuned down, uh, tuned, turned down as much. Very interesting. I can't speak to that because I don't have it. <laughs> uh, but what I do like about what Steven just said is that it's nearly identical to the Maytech F7, and I've had great luck with Maytech uh, flight controllers. I don't have any here, but the Maytech F411 flight controller has been like my go-to for almost two years, and it has not... I mean, is not disappointed. He's been killer. So that's awesome. That uh, that gives me hope. But that weird gyro noise thing is strange. 
Uh, hopefully more to come on that. What else do we have? Puffy says on Instagram, there are photos of the new Acrobat from all angles. It's... Look at it if you want. I've seen it. It's not that different. <laughs> it's it's not going to shock you in any way. Um, it's a little bit stronger. Awesome. No reason not to get it. Uh, unless you have a V1. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If, if you've got a V1 built, build another one. <laughs> Having two Acrobats um, would be really nice. I'm, I'm hoping to have one on the Zing motors and one on the T motors, uh, but we'll see. I'm down to my last uh, side plate on, on the V1. I will um, maybe get more. It would be cool to have, I have the prototype up on the wall that's broken, the V1 prototype on the wall that's blown up. Um, it would be cool to have the prototype V1, the production V1, and then I'll have the prototype V2, maybe the production V2. That'd be kind of cool but who knows uh kyle k says you need an overhead camera i do the biggest problem with that is my desk here is backed up against a wall it's also why i have a problem with lighting um i i actually got a new light here which is really really slick you can see it blowing out my hand um <clears throat> i'm not gonna remove it because i have it kind of shittily mounted on um fun tack actually on top of my monitor uh, but it's a uh, it's a stick. Well, I can just point the camera at it. What the hell's the matter with me? Here. It's a little stick cam. Or, not cam. It's a little stick light. And uh, it's got a couple different modes. The reason why these guys are nice is that they... So, once I get a second one of these... Uh, I gotta try to not go on too deep of a rant here. One of my other hobbies for the last 20 or so years has been photography. I got into lighting about 10 years ago and just went wild with it. Uh, so uh, a light source that's long and narrow is going to be very soft in that long direction. So like, for example, right? Let me get a shadow going. All right, so there's a shadow on my face right now. If I rotate the shadow, see the edges? See the edges got really harsh up here? Whereas when I rotate it like that, the edges of the shadow are a little bit softer. Um, that's because this light source right now is, is wide. It's very wide, but it's not very tall. All I have to do is actually get a second one of these and put it vertical, and that will take care of evening out the shadows. I, I wanted to make sure that this would be bright enough and that it would be um, white balanced enough, so I just got the one, uh, but I will be getting a second one of these for sure. This is a really, really nice little, uh, it's called Alpha Home. I'll throw a link to it if anybody's interested. Uh, really, really nice little light. I think it's actually a closet light that they just decided to make a little bit nicer than that. And they put warm LEDs in. They put daylight balanced LEDs in, which is what's on now. Um, you can dim it up and dim it down. And there's even like a flashing SOS mode. So, yeah. New little lighting setup. And then I have a little kicker back here uh, that's new uh, to do this little this little highlight on the side of my face to, to define my face. The the previous lighting setup I had was just blasting um, blasting some daylight balanced incandescent bulbs, LED incandescent bulbs into the wall and letting that just flood in. So it was a very soft light. Um, this is more what I do with photography. It's more targeted um, kind of specific lighting. Light your subject, light your background separately. Um, yeah, that's enough. I'll stop there because I have a there's a chance I'll go way deep on lighting and everybody will run away because it's just a snooze if you're not into it. Uh, what else do we have here? Sean Hale says, even after running 4.1 and RPM filters, still getting jello with the Zing 1507s, what should I be looking for from Betaflight to tune it out? Um, Sean, I think you're on Patreon. I have an article in there... Um, article, whatever. I have a post in there about reducing motor heat. Yes, reducing motor heat. Um, look at that. That's got a sort of order of operations uh, to working through motor heat, which is caused by vibrations. So with Jello, it's the same thing. Although actually, before you do that, check the lens. I chased Jello around <laughs> on this Acrobat 
for about a year and it would come and it would go and I would I would switch the camera I would switch the lens and like it was the weirdest thing I, I just couldn't tie down a clear path of like when I do this this and this it doesn't have jello the reason was I had three of these run cam split lenses two of them the newest two were rattling on the inside and they weren't rattling in a way that I could hear it so I'd heard about this problem so I would take my lenses and kind of shake them and tap them and eh, I'll be able to hear it I'm sure uh, but I couldn't hear it it was the lens that was the problem the inside of the lens was screwed up and it was vibrating and rattling around in there uh, which that's gonna produce a jello that you just can never get rid of so check the lens specifically if you have a run cam split if, if you're on uh, well, let me say this. If you're on a run cam with the smaller lens, the M8 lens, rather than the M12 lens, I am willing to bet it is your lens uh, because that's a big problem. I bought two new lenses uh, from run cam that had that problem. Two new run cam split M8 lenses. Uh, yeah, the M12 lenses apparently don't have a problem, and I have not seen that problem with Foxier or... Caddox, but you never know. So I, I would check that first. Check your lens, see if there's anything wobbling around. Check the body of the camera. Uh, I would almost even say buy another, buy another lens, buy a replacement lens for your camera, especially if it's a run cam, uh, and see if that fixes. Oh, you might get a bad one like I did. I bought a brand new lens at one point for mine, put it on. I was like, all right, well the lens is definitely not the problem because this is brand new. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Maybe it'll help you. Uh, if not, we'll talk on uh, we'll talk on Patreon. Turtle V two, you're running. Um, I have not had that problem with Turtle V twos, and they are an M twelve lens. But check it anyway. I don't think that think that that's the problem. Um, check that post out on Patreon. Work through those, and we'll get it figured out. We'll figure it out, man. Maybe I'll throw up a. Uh, that would be fun. I'll throw up a post in Patreon. Troubleshooting Sean Hales's Jello, um, and oh, you have a couple of lenses. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, yeah, try those out. Um, yeah, maybe I'll throw up a post on Patreon, and we'll use the comments to kind of walk through. That'd be a cool thing for everybody to kind of see in there and, and join in, and and um, yeah, that'll be fun. Maybe we'll do that. Uh, but check the lens first. All right, I think that. We are good here on the chat. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, cool. John Larson says, calculated crashes, that's my way of learning. You and me both, John. You and me both. All right, good deal. Uh, anybody who wants to ask a question from here on out, you got to tag me uh, or do a super chat. Oh, I forgot to mention, yeah, we got super chats. Uh, I finally got all the things and the places with YouTube, and they, uh, they did it, so I don't know how it works, but do a thing if you want. Um, the actual topic for tonight was looking at some of this footage and kind of chopping through it. I thought that you guys might dig that to A, see the footage because it was super gnarly at this, um, at this parking garage at night. And also to kind of give you guys a window of what my workflow is because uh, it does make a big difference having a good clean workflow um, specifically with editing is really really important um, to stay organized to just kind of have something that you can cleanly work through and you're not getting frustrated and also not losing your files to be honest for you um, to be honest with you rather you know we're flying every day every other day getting a ton of footage named GPO 04969er Sally um, and it's easy for it to disappear so the first thing that I do is make a folder and I know this seems super boring and very obvious but um, I make a folder with the year first because then when it organizes by name it groups all the 2019s um, so the year first, and then the month, and then the day, and some word or two uh, that 
represents what happened there and then I just ditch everything into that folder so that if I need to go back to it I can find it um, then I'm gonna pull all of those into Premiere and create a new project and that's what I've done here let me drag it back over there it is so drug them all down here into the project uh, when I do that uh, let me take a step back so when I create the project I turn on there's a, a little tab called ingest in Adobe Premiere in that tab you can tell it to ingest and create proxies my computer is well this current computer that I'm on is very old I've actually got thanks to Brad a ridiculous new laptop um, this is a 15 inch MacBook Pro from 2013 that is like way pimped out way 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 pimped out kind of like all the bells and whistles that um, you can throw at it it's got the crazy retina display which is just absurd um, and yeah this thing is way faster than the now 11 year old um, Mac Pro Tower that I have been on kind of struggling through as most of you know um, so once I get everything organized I, I have to get so I've got like four internal hard drives on that that are multiple terabytes each I need to get a um, an enclosure hopefully for like two of those maybe and then do some organization crunch everything down uh, and get the laptop going here I'll probably actually sell these two um, well no I'll probably sell one of these 23 inch clear monitors um, and get one of the newer aluminum monitors I think they made them in like 27 inch they don't sell for anything on eBay um, so I'll probably do that and I'll do I'll use the laptop screen just because the retina display is so gorgeous um, I'll do the laptop in maybe like a little uh, docking station and the second 27 inch display so that'll be pretty slick but uh, yeah so expect less technical problems or more maybe um, coming up soon once I get this this uh, laptop all up and running um, but on this computer or quite frankly I'll do the same thing on the laptop because working with the proxies is just so much faster when you start to really lay effects on um, if you're not working off of proxies which are just basically so what the proxies are is uh, Adobe Media Player opens up and it creates a tiny little like 720p or maybe even smaller um, version of the full quality videos and that way when you're editing it's a lot less uh, for it to handle server connections yeah disconnect that's fine um, it's a lot easier for it to handle it and that's then what this button here is going to do toggle presets or sorry toggle proxies um, so we're going to turn on the proxies I gave this enough time the way that you know it's a proxy is the little sidebars on the left and right um, that's how you know you're working in the proxies and when I'm on the proxies I can usually play at about uh, quarter quality sometimes half quality um, on the laptop I'm willing to bet that on the proxies I'll be able to play it full which will be really really nice uh, especially when I'm doing the color correction and whatnot uh, so now we've imported everything it has created the proxies if you forget to create the proxies what you can do once you've had everything um, imported you can just select all over here right click and there is a option proxy create proxies it's gonna pull up a little menu it does a good oh so there it is so it's the the preset is 1024 by 540 is the little tiny uh, version that it makes uh, so that you can use that while you're editing and then when you export at the end it uses the full quality footage uh, so there you go that's how you would make proxies after the fact if you forgot to do it on the uh, uh, when you built the project itself that kind of happens behind the scenes those proxies just get stowed away in your in your hard drive next to the original files um, you don't need to do anything at that point other than click the button that I showed you to toggle the proxies and voila your footage is gonna play a lot smoother so let's start playing through so th that's where I'm at now I then drag it all into the timeline and that's where we're at so uh, basically this just begins the process of looking just watching all the footage and chopping pieces out I used to do this in the operating system I would just spacebar in the Mac operating system to pull up the file and just I would just sit here and watch it and figure out if I wanted to ditch the whole file what I realized is then when I pulled it into Premiere I would have to watch it again to chop it up so I cut that 
down in half by doing this all in Premiere, and then if there's a if there's a uh, a file that's truly garbage, you know there's probably I can probably cut this down even further. I have been um, then going out to the operating system and deleting the file, but so like Lightroom, another Adobe project uh, product rather has the ability when you right click a file to delete it from the hard drive. I'm trying to see if Premiere has that. I can make it offline. I don't want to do that though. Rename. So this is what I've been doing. I just reveal it in the finder, um, reveal the clip in finder and then just right click it and trash it. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a way for me to delete it from in here, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I would just if I decided this whole file is junk, I would just reveal in Finder. That's going to open up a window with it, and throw it in the throw it in the trash. Uh, so let's start looking. This is the first time I'd ever flown this spot. This is a spot that um, we get ki that everybody gets kicked out of during the daytime. Uh, but I come to this spot a couple times at night to see if the security guards were there, and I didn't see any. I didn't see any cars for them to be driving to drive up the parking garage and yell at me. Um, and sure enough, we flew here for like three hours. We flew here from two and a half hours. From midnight, we got there, and we didn't leave till 2.30 in the morning, and we were hammering the whole time. I mean, we flew a ton of batteries and made a huge ruckus here. Uh, so this is going to become my night spot, and it's about 100 feet away from my apartment. <laughs> I could legit walk to this spot. Uh, so, yeah, this is nuts. So here we go. Let's start reviewing it. I'll try to talk through it. Let me dump down the audio from track one so that I don't deafen you guys. And away we go. So at this spot, I broke three motor bells and the micro eagle and the acrobrat motor um so let's just all right well so it's dark enough that i can almost not see it at this point so i'm gonna jump right in and do an adjustment filter just to brighten it up um the only problem with this is going to be that the um the, the adjustment layer is going to take some Majimbo for this thing to uh, run. But maybe if I only make... So I'm going to make my adjustments on this adjustment layer versus applying them directly to the clips because the adjustment layer is going to sit on top and I can turn it off to see what it looks like before and after. Um, if I chop a clip up... There's not going to be any weirdness with the settings between one and the other. The adjustment layer just will just sit on top of everything else on the video two layer here, and it's just going to apply to everything that's below it. Uh, it's just a much better setup to do your color correction on an adjustment layer here rather than doing it directly into the clips. Um, we're going to go over here to Lumetri Color and Basic Corrections, and we're just going to add some exposure to this because I just, like I said, I just want to brighten it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to go to 0.8 on the exposure. I'm not doing, this is not my final color correction. I just want to be able to see what the hell's going on. I'm also going to grab these shadows and I'm going to pull them up to, I don't know, whatever looks good. That looks about right there. Um, it's just going to make it a little bit easier for me to see what the hell's going on. So let's jump back into it. Looks like it's playing fine with the adjustment filter, so we'll leave it in there. Um, I got to go back though. All right, so start up here. That's Brad's rig with the Zing motors. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but jumped off here, tried to follow him through this power loop, lost him immediately because he doesn't have LEDs all over the place like I do. So this is all right. Still pretty smooth. couple little power loops. Flipping back down here. This looks all right. Big power loop. I was trying to get as far back to the other walkway as I could. I really wanted to pitch forward on that and go under there, but um, it's just such a reckless move. All right, so there's our first true screw-up. So let's get that out of there. Uh, what I like to do is chop it right before the screw-up. And the screw-up was... Ah, I went too far back. Let's zoom in a little bit on this clip. 
Alright, this will be a little bit better now. Throwing it back here. Going for the throw. Missed it. So that's that's pretty much where I'm going to cut it right there. Because that is a flat out uh, missed throw. And so I'm actually going to cut it here when I'm inverted. Because there's a chance that I can use that as the out cut and cut into another clip that is inverted like this or maybe looking down at the uh, at the street and that might be like a slick little cut so I try to cut a little bit extra um, because if I cut it too tight and I cut this out I won't remember that this is here I'm about to make a hundred more cuts to this I won't remember and I just cut the adjustment layer you gotta make sure that you cut the video not the adjustment layer um, if you cut it too close you can potentially forget that you had that nice little transitional um, look down at the at the pavement so always give yourself a little bit extra uh, just in case there's a good little opportunity to uh, blend that into the next clip so let's keep going here we go faffing about trying to get into the walkway nice little split s almost bashed that sign right as I did that Brad was going holy hell I almost hit the sign there's a sign in the middle under the walkways he was on the other side he did the same thing um, let's see if there's anything after that of any value. So the next cut needs to be, um, the end of flying like hell. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for any, any kind of interesting flying. See, so that's, that's kind of ugly there. I, none of this is all that great. Eh, it's okay. This is a cool little throw. I like that I dropped down back behind the trees, but I don't know, kind of dark there. And then I did this big power loop and left the sky in the frame for way too long. Um, so, and there's this big dive gap, which you guys are going to get to see a lot of. So this is still kind of all junk. There's, I try to find like at least 10 seconds of flow. Um, and I just don't have that quite yet. This is kind of a failed attempt to dive in down. And then that's just kind of, ugh, just kind of popping straight up. So... I'm going to keep going because I'm, I'm still not seeing anything that I really want to keep. Mm, now we're getting there. All right, so now we're getting there. Go back a little bit here and let's see where we can open this. I want to see where I want to put the next cut to get rid of garbage and it might be right around there. Maybe. Yeah, okay. So now I'm going back here. Let's see if this is... Ah, but see, then I'm... I'm jumping the throttle up and down. Uh, what I, I try to be really hard on myself when I'm doing, uh, when I'm chopping up the video, because I would rather have a shorter edit with better flying than a longer one with just junk. <laughs> oh, so this is where I went down the sidewalk. I might actually leave that in, even though I'm bouncing the throttle. I might leave that in, because that's a part of this nice, great big run. All right, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that into into something here. So let's figure out where we're gonna open this, uh, this run. It's actually not a bad spot there. Let's take a look here. Yeah, see, this is a half decent spot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for anything. Oh look, a kitten! It's kitten stream. Settled a little back. Oh wait, I need to this way there he is it's all dopey all sleepy dopey dope kitten look at that guy <laughs> world's most expensive outdoor kitten right. that came indoor going away now. <laughs> <laughs> bye kitten <laughs> thanks for continuing the tradition of kitten streams um so i'm oh. Uh, I'm going to move back a little bit. Like I said, I'm just going to cut a little bit looser in case there's something that's happening in here um, that I can sync up with on the previous cut. So I'll probably chop it right around here. This is a good spot. And then I'm going to select this piece here because this is the junk, right? This We've been wading through all this junk to find something good. Um, I used to ripple delete this. But what I'm now doing is just regular deleting it because 
it's nice to have a little bit of extra space in here to work with uh, to be able to kind of move these around. Sometimes you just need to have a little, little bit of a gap here. Uh, so I'm going to pull that over like that. And uh, now let's figure out where we're going to end this little run. I think I know where that's going to be. Now we've got this guy here. Oh, Sean put his LEDs on a switch. That's really slick. I run the uh, the the little um, tiny's LEDs that just take that just come right off the battery voltage, so they're just always on. Uh, but having them on a switch is cool. I'm assuming that I would have to run addressables to be able to do that, uh, or at least put them on a pad that. Yeah, I guess I would just have to put them on a pad that uh, that. I then did a thing with what is this little green thing? What the hell is this? There's a little green is that a marker? Adjustment layer, enable. I put a little marker there. I didn't even realize it. Whatever. Uh so ripping down the sidewalk. Cause there was nobody here. I swear it wasn't as reckless as it looks. Except for that SUV. Uh, then we're doing this little weird nonsense. Eh, it's kind of alright. I can maybe work with that. Still okay, still okay, still okay. Eh, that's ugly. Why did I go over there? There was no purpose into going over there. So, we're gonna cut it. We are gonna chop it right up here. Yeah, we'll cut it right around there. Maybe I can sync that up with uh, something else on the top of the garage. All right, so this is now junk. Let's look for a good little section of flow here. It's probably not going to be this because I was all janky all over the place. Oh, right. I, was, I wanted to get in there and investigate. Yeah, so this is just me screwing around. Um... There we go, okay. So there's coming back in there. This is all crap. This is all gonna cut out. Blop, 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 blop. There were invisible wires there that we hit a couple times. That was fun. All right, so now we're talking. Now we got a little wall ride love, but nowhere near enough momentum for it. Ooh. All right, so I'm gonna leave that in. I'm all about the uh, crash reels lately so let's kill this and then we're just gonna grab that crash wait till it hits the ground <laughs> all right good chop the crash grab the crash move the crash is the name of the game uh, moving the audio down to audio 3, moving the video up to video 3. I'm going to zoom out. No, I'm not, because it gets too small for me to grab. There we go. And I just pull these out towards the end. Um, I, I tend to put them in the end of the video, so I just drag them out to the end there so that it can uh, hang out. All right, you guys are talking about LEDs on a switch, and I want to know what you're talking about. Um, like you did a while ago because I'm flying at night somewhere. Maybe shouldn't be uh, turn them off to unwanted attention. Yeah, that's all. That's that's a really good idea. There's a mode called LED low that turns off anything on the LED pad. Uh, but yeah, not the ones that just run off of five volt. That's cool. Um, building a new quadru uh, house blog is building a new quadru releases crashed one. Just use the strips that connect on the. Use the strips that connect on the motor wire. Okay, yeah. Um, why can't I think of what they're called? Race wire LED race wires. Uh, addressable ones are cool, but kind of a wiring mess. So that's that's why I stay away from the addressables. Is that just I don't want to run any unnecessary wires in there. Super fun. I would love to build like a super LED'd up rig to fly at night at the beach or whatever. Um, but yeah, haven't done that quite yet. Actual physical switch on the on the quad. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. That wouldn't be hard to do. Uh, have some real pits that I'm going to try to figure out how to set up so we can switch it from my controller. That's slick. I like that. That's a really good idea, Sean, to use those real pits. Very, very cool. Um, YouTube and use 
dental floss and heat shrink to tame the wire mess. It's a cool idea. I like that. I guess you use the, the dental floss to pull the wires through, um, I'm assuming. Kevlar, yeah, Kevlar string is good for that. If uh, Something else that's good for that, if you guys have paracord, 550 paracord, um, you can gut that. It's got a bunch of uh, really nice string inside that's very strong. You mentioned Kevlar string. That's what made me think about it. Uh, but yeah, if you have any 550 cord, just chop it and you'll see there's a bunch of uh, strings inside. You can pull them out. Um, and the, I use those a lot for, for fishing things through other things. Uh, all right, uh, let's keep going. Ah, I use it to braid. Nice. Okay, so I think I checked the props here. Yeah, I, nah. I just brought it back so I could hear it clearly, and it sounded fine. So the shredding continues. A little bit of prop wash there. Not bad. Ooh, I should have gone under it. Yeah, and see, I... I slowed down too much to go through it, and that ruins it. But that's okay. We got more. Mm, I didn't get any of these clean. I was trying to do a little roof tap, but I just kept losing my momentum, and I said to hell with it. Uh, all right. So we got about tw 20 more minutes, guys. Let's see what we can d get done in 20 minutes. So if you have questions, throw them up. Tag me so I can see them. That might have been cool. What was that? Eh, I went too far back. Let me zoom back in again. All right, so coming into the... And then back out. Oh, you know, I didn't want to stay in the parking garage because I was flying from the roof. That's why I kept just going in and coming back out. Let's see if I... Uh, and the video was getting horrible from where we were standing. I really wanted to dive that all to the ground, um, but there's plenty of that later on. This is all right. Just kind of, ah, it's a good throw. I like that throw. Ah, but see, what the? Come on, man. Oh, okay. I was getting low battery. Uh, all right. Let me see if I can salvage that. I really like that slow motion throw over top of that uh, thing. But it's. See, that's okay, that's okay, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. It's not enough of a run. I I, I don't just want to have an just edit and then five seconds later, second edit. Alright, so that's gone. That whole big chunk is gone. Now we'll pull the next one in and keep going. Uh, this is not the Acrobat Michi, this is uh, the Glide. This is a 5 inch Glide frame with T-Motor F40 Pro 2's. I have no idea where the audio is on this. Uh, yes I do. This is Premiere being a pain in the ass. Sometimes Premiere doesn't pull the audio in. Um, I'll deal with that later though. Because I don't think you guys are getting much of the audio anyway. Um, Alright. Getting warmed up, getting warmed up. Let's see what your boy Ciotti's got for you on this battery. Playing around up top here, getting nice and low, trying to get a little line going to show the whole parking garage. And I think I went after that dive gap again. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm just trying to see where the video gets bad at that point. I really wanted to get down in there, but it just was not safe to do it from the, the corner of the roof where I was standing. See, and that's where I really checked the video, and it was black. By the time I got to the bottom there, the video went completely out, and I just slammed on the throttle to, to get up and out of there. Luckily, Crossfire had better range than 5.8 did. Um, so this is all just crap, because <laughs> I'm just faffing about. Um... I wonder what I was doing there. Might have been changing something in the OSD. That's strange. Eh, this might be an okay little run. Tell me, well, nope, there goes that. Not putting that in. 
Uh, oh man, look at that judder. That was weird. That was super awkward. Maybe that's why I landed it. Maybe I was trying to tune something out. It only happened a couple nights ago. What am I up to? Something weird must have been going on. I'm in like horizon mode there. Strange. Yeah, I think most of this is going to go. Most of the highlights from this night of flying, though, were in that, that dive gap trench thing. All right, let's see if there's anything of value in here. That was a failed power loop. Um, I should have powered straight up out of that. That would have been cool looking. I don't get much opportunity to play with um, overhead walkway bridgey kind of things like that. So uh kind of spent more time flipping and flopping around him than I should have. Uh, that's kind of alright. I love that I extended that all the way out to a full spin, but I don't know, there's not much purpose to this flying. I'm just kind of flip-flopping around. Eh, I don't know. Already did that. That was ugly. Here we go, this might be something. Let's see. That's all right. That's cool. That kind of shows the space. Please do something cool. All right. I don't hate it. Annoying little judder in the tune. I think this is the untuned rig. Ah, okay. All right. We got something here. We got something here. We got a little run. Uh, again, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it pretty generously, just in case there's something that's going to match up. So that means it was where I started to play on the rooftop. So let's see that. You guys are talking about FETs? Damn. All right. It's getting serious in the chat. All right. It's going to be right around here. Nope. Here it is, right around here. Okay, so I'm gonna include, so here's an example of that. I'm going to chop this here because when everything is moving like that, it makes it easy to find like a little um, spot to cut it in with. So I am actually gonna ripple delete this because I just wanna pull it over a little bit. All right, so this is gonna be it. So we got a good little run here. We looped around, been, I was trying to do that for a while, and then I janked it up right there. So that's that's pretty cool, though. Eh. I hate that little correction. I wish I hadn't janked this right here, but this little throw is kind of nice. That's kind of fruity and loopy. Um, so I'll leave it. Let's see what I'm what I'm up to here. Yeah, doing my little move. All right, now it's just totally off the reservation. All right, cool. So I'm going to cut this right around here. And then it's probably all junk for the rest. Uh, down to about 10 minutes. I got to show you guys. I think we only flew two from there, and then we started flying in that trench. And that's when it gets real interesting. Yeah, and this is just me killing the end of the battery. All right, cool. Let's go ham in the trench. What's that, a booger on my keyboard? Oh boy, that's a big one. Oh no, it's a little leaf. All right. Let's, it's time to go full bananas. Although actually I was, yeah, so there, there's the trench there to the, to the left. So we literally stood right next to the trench on like the second or third floor. <laughs> so we were getting great signal in the trench and I, we were actually getting great signal in the entire parking garage, standing inside the parking garage. I guess it just, everything was just bouncing everywhere off the, 
off the concrete. Um, the rapid fire was doing a hell of a job killing the, uh, um, killing all the multipathing. All right, so it took me a while to warm up because this is the first time I've flown in a parking garage. There I am hitting those goddamn wires. Um, and then I just couldn't get it to turtle mode back over. Uh, here we go, though. All right. YouTube, and if you're asking about this, this is a uh, GoPro session. Five. All right, warming up, warming up, warming up, getting used to the low ceilings, and also figuring out where all these wires were. <laughs> Once I hit the wires, I was like, all right, I gotta be a little more careful. Uh, so, okay, yeah, I wanted to check the uh, props. All right, so that, that whole, all right, so... This is our chance to kill an entire uh, file. What the hell is it? Well, I guess I can't click on it in here. So that's uh, 3921. I'm going to come over here. 3921, reveal and finder, and ship balls. That's the proxy. Well, that's okay. I'll kill the proxy, and then... God damn it. It's supposed to put the proxies next to the original files. Uh, but I probably missed that button. So we're going to go in here. What did I say it was? 3921, 3921, move the trash. There you go. Now that guy is gone. Yeah, now Premiere is telling me that it's a dead link in the file path. Uh, and that's fine. We're going to offline it. We're going to kill this. And we're going to kill that. Next, battery has no audio but it doesn't need it because it is shred time in the trench let's get our trench on people so as you can see there it was really hard to stay uh perfectly level up and down there was some wind um but it was also just hard to to be super perfectly accurate with with my sticks um, to, to line it up just right and, and be able to throw myself up out of there. Uh, and the, it's not that big of a gap. It's the, the gap there is probably about three feet, maybe, um, surprisingly tight in there. And there was also the stairwell that just kept begging to be included on the fun. So yeah, it was, this was a lot of just trying to figure out how the hell to not bash into this concrete um, and seeing how hard I could go in there before it got fully reckless and out of control. Let's get back in there. Come on, get back in that trench. Get in that trench. Do some good stuff. Here we go. All right, getting back in the trench, <laughs> hitting the pillar, getting in that trench. Let's see what we can do. That's a pretty good one. Okay, so... Yeah, let's see, then I screw it up by getting all jacked up on the way out there. All right. So this might be where we bring something in. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, man, God. So hard. Here you go. Here you go. Here's something for you guys. Ooh, buddy. I did that a bunch more times, but that was actually one of the more clean ones. It wasn't the most exciting one, and Brad just whipped by. <laughs> Holy crap. That was close. Let's see. Where's he at? Should be up here somewhere, I think. Oh, there he is. Here he comes. <laughs> oh, that was pretty close. All right, five more minutes. I'm just going to play you guys the... Uh, me going full banana ham. Um, this was the last battery, and I was comfortable, and I was ready to break some shit. So that's what I did. Let me get back here. Oh, of course, there's no audio. Um, I guess I haven't played any. Uh, might as well. Might as well let the. I don't monetize these streams, so. I don't really care that they get uh, 
blocked. Oh, come on, Spotify, really? All right, I'm gonna pretty much randomly pick a uh, pick something out of my favorites for this, and then I'll just let this play for a minute for you guys because I gotta wrap this up. It's late. I'm tired. I'm hungry. What do we got? Let's pick something. We got this. This will get it done. All right, boys and girls. Here you go. Here's your boy. Oh, wait. Let's go full screen with it. <laughs> that was ambitious. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't brave enough for those. It was just too tight in there. <laughs> ah, I wish I'd run that. I wish I hadn't stalled that. Oh, and that, so that's what killed three motors. So, that was... It was two motors on the initial hit. Janked up? What am I doing? Oh, I went back way farther than I thought. Man, I really... I gotta go back here, and I'm gonna send it on, on some of those. Uh, Spotify, Sterling. Spotify does a better job than anybody I've found at um, suggesting really good stuff based on what you've been listening to and what you've liked. Yeah, so there it is. I just got off a little bit. The um, the two left side motors hit the concrete here hard and blew up. And then uh, the right front motor banged, I think, down here. I think the, the right front banged on there. And it was just over. <laughs> so I'm still going. Let's get a little bit more going. Here we go. This is like that whole battle. Whoa, what happened there? <laughs> ah, I should have kept that going. I could have gotten that rotated around. There's Brad going by again. <laughs> yeah, me and Brad were basically both just in here ripping around over and over and over again. I can't wait to see his footage because I had the LEDs on. Well, oh, we lost our song. Nah, not Gambino. There is Brad again. <laughs> yeah, it was, man, it was so sketchy even just doing power loops in there. I really want to get some of the pitch forward stuff going, but whew. And it's not exactly like there's a, a soft landing anywhere. <laughs> That's cool. I never noticed that. It's cool when I go by myself with the, uh, there's Brad, <laughs> with the uh, lights from the goggles. So that was the sketchiest throw that I did through there. I was sure I was hitting that pipe. Na na na. 
I really wanted to get a big one like that, but my god, it was hard to keep it lined up. And I'm trying to do it all without corrections, too, which is the problem. You gotta have it lined all the way up. See, now that was a correction. That was actually a really good little correction there. But, man, hard to do. Alright, so now we're back to that spot. I think that's all I got for you guys tonight. Um, oh, man, what a great song. I think I've been... This is one of the songs I've been hoarding. Yeah, Grizz and Tash Neal. Um... Oh, <laughs> Sterling just dropped a hot soldering iron on his lap. Oh, man. I will pray for your balls, Sterling. Um, <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to look real quick at the uh, comments here to get caught up, make sure I didn't miss anything amazing. Uh, I'm sure I did, but... Sean uses the outer jacket from Paracord to protect the uh, motor wires. Does it actually protect or do they chop right through it? I feel like they would chop right through it. Especially the T-Motor 5143s. My God, are they sharp. Um, what else do we have here? You guys started talking about FETs. That's way over my head. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Forest of Gold. Favorite track from that guy. That is a good song, YouTube. And... Uh, Sterling, we talked about the music. Yeah, Sterling, I use Spotify, and then, um, when I'm ready to start, when I finally... So, I star songs that I like in Spotify, and then while I'm editing, when I'm not streaming, um, I will let Spotify roll on random, so that as I'm editing, if, if a song just kind of fits properly with the, the tone and the pacing of the flying, I'll grab it, um, I'll jump on SoundCloud, look it up on there... And then just dump it into, um, <laughs> drop it into like SoundCloud Ripper just to grab a quick version of the song. I can then drop it into Premiere, see if I like it. Um, if it's the right one, I'll then go spend the dollar um, to grab the song and then use it for the edit. Um, I was just laughing by the fact that Sterling said his ex-wife took his balls. <laughs> oh, Christ. All right. Good spot to end there, I think. Um, let me go over to this. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I don't think I have anything else to unbox or show you for the night. It's midnight. We should all go to sleep. It's a school night. Just kidding. Don't go to sleep. Stay up all night. Um, yeah, I think I'm good. I don't think I have anything else to show you that's actually exciting. So, um, thanks for coming on. Patreon is in the description. Uh, Ciati FPV on Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. Uh, I think that's about it. Awesome. Thanks for hanging, guys. You all rule. Wednesday night, hopefully we'll have Women Wednesday. Kristen will maybe do some more work on her build. Uh, next week's going to be a little rough. Um, next, Monday through Friday of next week, I have to be in Charleston for work. I'm leaving Monday morning. So in theory, Sunday... I can take uh, Joshua's uh, stream spot, which is 1 o'clock for the European crowd. So maybe I'll do that. I have to talk to Joshua about it. Um, thanks, YouTube and Awesome. Uh, and then Monday night, maybe I'll stream from the hotel room. I'm bringing all my shit. Uh, I will maybe have flown. Maybe I'll fly Monday after work down there. I'll fly the bridge spot. Uh, so maybe we'll have some footage to look at. Regardless, I'll have the new laptop with me. I'll make sure I get OBS and everything on it this week. Uh, so I'll just maybe do a stream, a simple stream from the laptop. I don't know how good the laptop camera is, but, well, does it even have one? I think they all do now, right? Yeah, it looks like a little camera up there. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll stream from the hotel room on Monday. Uh, we'll talk about some stuff. Until then... Go out and fly. Oh, that's going to be hard now. The sun goes down so early. Shit. Yeah, I'm going to have trouble flying next week. I'm going to have to try to go out on my lunch and fly. Meh. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Thanks for hanging out, guys. You all rule. Uh, my name's Aaron Ciotti. My friends call me Ciotti. You can call me whatever the fuck you want. Have an awesome night. <laughs> Later, guys. <laughs>